I was born in a little city called Derry in Northern Ireland. My father was a plasterer and his father before him. From my father and my grandfather, I learned my trade, especially my grandfather, whom I love very much and he loved his trade, passing on that love of the trade to me. I finished my apprenticeship. My grandfather said, well, Sonny said, you're now going to compete against older and wiser men in this trade in the city. So I would say that you travel across the world, learn more about your trade, come back to your homeland if you like, but travel, see more, learn more, and the best of luck. Through the depression, the building was allowed to run down for the lack of money. Uh, then the maintenance then had to be carried out. There was a challenge there. It was very badly decayed. Hundreds of pigeons flying everywhere. Everything rotten, moss hanging from it, missing pieces. When you look at a job, you get a feeling in your fingers. It then becomes a challenge. You get the feeling right in the tips of your fingers that you want to do it, you want to accomplish it, and you want to start it. If the brickwork has deteriorated, they will then have to knock down all the brickwork. The brickwork is rebuilt. From that brickwork, we then run our moulds, laying laths top and bottom for to hold our profile. We build on our sand and cement and run our moulds, which in turn like is our profile, along the sand and cement until we get an impression of what we want. We keep building that out with sand and cement, sometimes three coats of sand and cement, sometimes four coats. Uh, the finished job is a very, very light slurry of sand and cement, very, very soft. We we'll then allow it to set a little bit, and we touch up any little odd spots with our little handmade floats. On one particular part of this building, we use anything up to, say, th three, 4,000 bricks. It's completely taken down a part of a building like a pediment, breaking it up again, restoring it completely to what it was. The boss coming on the scaffold and saying, well, how's progress? You can't see what I've done except that the job's completed and looks like the town hall used to be. All that being accomplished, and another person to say, well, what have you done? That's when I want to put my hands in my pockets and jump off the scaffolding. These tools we can buy in a shop. Each wooden hand float takes about three to four hours to make. So we spend a weekend making three or four floats. Sometimes you dedicate a weekend to your tools, maybe once every two months. You've got to get a good feeling in your hand of the tool that you're making, otherwise it doesn't feel right. Little snags can happen on these jobs as we go along. For instance, as we progressed, we then found that we didn't have the urns, as all the urns were taken from the town hall. In about 1934, the architect, Mr. Peter Lovell, searched, searched around Melbourne he found that North Melbourne Town Hall had urns similar to those used in the Collingwood Town Hall. We then got one of those urns from North Melbourne Town Hall with the kind permission of the Melbourne City Council to make the moulds from that particular urn. Up went the cherry picker to its height, only to discover we were 25 feet short of the urn that we were after. So then we had to take it down off the cherry picker, go inside the building, climb up in the inside tires, and with saws and chisels and bolsters, we had to take down one of the big urns, all the time holding it to the inside, a bit afraid that it would fall out onto the street. We struggled downstairs, one floor, two floors, three floors to the bottom. When we got it down, we were exhausted. We were covered in sweat, we were sweat up to our ankles from the morning's work, with the excitement of getting it down without any uh, mishaps or accidents. Uh, we, had the rest of the, we had the rest of the day off. We said, that's it, we're doing no more work today. So we departed and left the urn sitting here on the floor to be made up at a later date. That is the actual mould which we made from the urn that was taken from North Melbourne Town Hall. The mould itself consists of two pieces. First, a latex rubber moulding on the inside 
The outside consists of hemp and plaster, which holds the latex together and stops it spreading. The, the school near here is the Collingwood Technical School, which has a plastering class. The boys from that school come here every month or so. The boys talk about plastering, talk about making molds. Then I give a little talk to the boys before they go about dedicating themselves to the trade, to take pride in what they're doing, to love what they're doing, and every day to make their job just that little bit better than the day before. We mix up some sand, four and one cement, sand and cement, four and one. We mix it up pretty dry. We push it into the mold and then start hammering at home with a hammer and a wooden block. That is known in the trade as pressed cement. We then put in some reinforcing, which is chicken wire. We then put on another layer of sand and cement, and this again is battered home with a mash hammer. When all the, uh, that is punched home and you know that it's firmly in place, we flatten out the inside of the urn, smooth out the inside of the urn with sponges. And that is about the completed job. Another winner. Well, that's it, Dad. I'll be back to another winner. Yeah. The urn itself is left for two days to sort of cure. We then take it out of the mold, hose it down, and we keep hosing it down every day then for about a week until it is cured properly. At the very top, the balusters were a lot bigger. So as the building came down, the balusters and size got smaller. That meant then making anything up to 16 or 17 different types of molds for this one particular piece. This particular mold is a baluster. Now we can't really press sand and cement work into deep work like this. So using the same sand and cement, four and one, we make it a lot softer. We use what be, what's known in the trade as a plunger, which plunges it up and down, which makes it like a thick soup. Then we pour that into the mold. and then we prod it to take out the air bubbles. This is allowed to set and remain in the mold for another two days. Sometimes you take a piece of work off an old building, you put it on your bench. You think about it, how you're going to break it down, how you're going to cast it, how you're going to rerun. Then you have to think about it more, well, how would the old boys have done this job? How they would they have went about it? The ornamental uh, decorative work was deteriorated. We had to take that down onto the benches, remodel them, take molds from those particular pieces, and recast some of the, of the ornamental work, such as the balloons, the balusters, the floral pieces. Uh, some pieces was up to six and seven different types of molds to be made from them. I've been here now about seven years. It took about three months to tee up the materials, to recast some of the mold before we started, some of the lead work, and then uh, six years straight on the scaffold every day, on the benches every day up and down. In the summertime, we, did, we go at it more outside to try and complete as much of the outside work as we can. In the wintertime, when it's wet and we can't do too much work, then we come down to our workshops, uh, make our molds, make our urns, and make other pieces in preparation for the next couple of months' work again. Uh, and, of course, every fine day we are out on the scaffold. Yeah, that's it, Dad.
I think myself, there is about another year's work, a year and a half, work on the job. I've passed on some of my trade to some of the younger lads here, to some of my younger boys here. I hope they follow in my footsteps. And they, I know they have pride in the work or I wouldn't have them. Uh, just pull it clear of that ledger, Gary. Pull it clear of the ledger. What I like mostly about my work is the satisfaction of making and creating something that'll be there a long time from now. To pass by on a bus or a train and look at a particular city building or look at a college and say, well, I've worked on that job and I like working on that job and I had good mates on that job. That in itself, to me, is satisfaction. Can you see it? I have come to like Collingwood Town Hall. I have come to like the people I have worked with and associated with in the building. But the building trade, being as it is, we move along, we do our jobs. We move along, we do our job. That's been my life, as the life of the people before me. I miss it very much. But as they say in the building trade, a new job, new friends. Mm -hmm.